happy that I got to be a part of that operation. But the whole thing also made me realize that there are still many problems in Sumeru. And as a desert dweller, I'm still not completely ready to settle down on this side of the wall. Well, I remember a friend had someone bring you a message. You mean I'll hate them? <laughs> I didn't expect him to still remember that. I thought he was joking. We just came from talking with Alhatham at the Academia. Did he tell you that he suggested that I come work at the Academia? What? I heard that Azar and his cronies fell from power, and Alhatham told me that now was a good time to find a job in the Academia, but only if I wanted to. <laughs> Me neither. Oh, but I think Dia would look great dressed up as a scholar. Ugh, ugh, forget about it. I wouldn't last ten seconds in there. I'll hate them probably just like the way I worked and knew I'm good in a fight. So he suggested I find some work in the academia. But you know, if you take him up on the offer, Sino might actually agree and let you become a mantra. Because you're super amazing! <laughs> The Matra have all the talent they need as long as they have Sino. I prefer to be free to live however I choose. In fact, I chose this job from the very start because I knew it would be right up my alley. Even if being a mercenary means facing all kinds of danger. A lion has to return to the wild sooner or later. If anything, being your bodyguard has been unfamiliar territory for me. I don't want to see you go, but I'll respect your decision. I'm glad to hear you say that. Come on, no need for the sad face. It's not like we'll never meet again. Once the whole Dendro Archon thing is settled, everything in Sumeru will take a turn for the better. That makes me happy too. But a peaceful society will probably mean less demand for mercenaries like me. Before long, we'll be a dying breed. So I'd better get to work while I still can. You make it sound like you're leaving now! Well, no. Not yet, at least. I promised my lady I'd stick around until next week. So, have you been in Port Ormos this entire time? We were wondering if you had received a letter from Nilu. Oh, uh, did Nilu write to us? She heard that you were seen in Port Ormos, so she sent the letter here. Huh. It was probably sent to the inn that we're staying at. My lady has been very energetic lately, and keeps taking me on hikes, staying out even into the night. By the time we get back, the receptionist is usually off napping on the job. Right, and we tend to leave quite early in the morning, so the old man on duty is also usually dozing off. So what it really sounds like is that the person on duty is always asleep. I bet the letter's at the reception desk. I'll go check later. No wonder there wasn't a reply. You never received the letter. Good thing Nilu asked us to come and kick on that. Ah, uh, sorry to make you two come all the way out here. It must be something important for Nilu to specifically write to us like that. Yes, she said they were preparing a victory feast in the Grand Bazaar, and we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. She was hoping you could come. Great, I'll be sure to attend. Count me in, too. But is there some sort of dress code or anything for the feast? Can I just show up looking like this? Since it's being organized by Nilu, I don't think she'll be too picky about that. If anything, I think she wants to see us as our most natural selves. All right, then this is how I'll show up. The feast will be held in two days, so don't forget! Sure. Thank you so much for letting us know. We'll see you there. The General Mahamatra always comes and goes without a trace. Normally, no one knows his whereabouts. Oh. But last time we met, he mentioned that he had something to do in Aru Village. You can try your luck there. As for Raman, your guess is as good as mine. I only remember he said that he had something. Don't mention it. You'd better get going.